Okay, this is for you guys who, like me, may have picked up one of these nice little Atmega 328P chips and you get the cheaper one and oops, you found out you can't load your Arduino sketch into it because it don't have a bootloader on it. That's why it's cheaper. Well, you start googling around looking on the Arduino site and they have tutorials on how to upload the sketch. It's supposed to be really easy. Uh, one of the ones I found was uh, linking a Arduino Uno, which I have, to a breadboard or another Arduino, and I use that as a reference point. You can just Google Arduino bootloader. And you come up with basically what I found and tried and without success. I kept getting uh, out of sync errors when uploading uh, the bootloaders and whatnot. It, it would never work right. I don't know exactly what was wrong. At first I thought maybe it was in my wiring or something loose or in my breadboard. Uh, Coming to find out, it was none of that. It was the software. It was the sketch. Uh, and I only came to that conclusion when I stumbled on another sketch that also uploads bootloaders to the Atmega chip, made by this uh, Mr. Nick Gammon. And uh, I really appreciate, appreciate his work. This is a real godsend. It's going to save me a lot of time. It's very reliable, at least in my experience. Uh, so if you've been having problems, uh, may want to try this sketch. This is really a how-to on uploading your bootloader quickly, easily, efficiently, reliably. Um, and the first part is software. Have a good sketch that can do it reliably. And of course, the other part is software. Uh, again, this is Nick Gammon who wrote this sketch. You can Google his site. It's usually like the first result. Nick Gammon bootloader. Yeah, gammon.com.au. And there's an app mega board programmer zip file on there that contains the Arduino sketch that I have here. And that's just a blink. This is the sketch here. And it seems like I'm running a serial monitor down here from earlier. Let me turn. No, I'm not. Um, that is actually. Uh, communications coming from a pro micro that I will be showing you how to do this very easily on without tying up a, a breadboard or one of your Arduino Unos. Now this here is my pro micro you can get these for three dollars and some change on eBay. It has a SMD uh, at Mega three two eight, very small, very cheap. So I didn't mind uh, kind of burning one with this uh, sketch from Mr. Gammon here to just use for this purpose. That is my uh, bootloader Arduino, if if you will. Uh, and of course this is the master. In order to tie this to something a little bit more robust and permanent without using a breadboard, I wanted to design a shield for this that I could mount my Atmega chip to. Well, in the process I realized that what I would end up with was almost an Arduino within itself. And this is what I came up with. 
this is basically almost identical pinout compatibility to the Pro Micro, except that it has a slot for a Atmega328. And it has the, the big difference is uh, other than that is this jumper here on the end that is a uh, digital 10 line programming mode jumper. Essentially what this does is when I want to use this as an Atmega uh, or an Arduino uh, board with a chip in it like on a breadboard or something uh, I leave the jumper off. Then digital line 10 or digital input 10 whatever you want to call it acts normally. Um, when I want to tie it to reset, which is what these uh, bootloader sketches call to call for, tying the Arduino line digital line 10 to reset, then I jumper that. So essentially, I can take my Pro Micro, attach these together, and I have a bootloader unit. And I'll show you how that's done now. And of course, for anybody who knows about these Pro Minis, uh, they're very cheap. And one of the reasons they are very cheap, they have no onboard serial. They do have this uh, FTDI 232 type, uh, well, FTDI general uh, connector. I just so happen to have a FTDI 232 interface board module. Uh, mini USB connector. Also extremely cheap, a couple of bucks if that on eBay. That will program the Pro Micro and will connect to the board that I made here, my uh, bootloader slash Arduino unit. Um, this particular uh, FTDI 232 module is inverted uh, so if I were to run wires between these or even the original Pro Micro same what I find is that I would have to flip it upside down in order for everything to line up properly and plus I didn't want to run wires anyway that's too much like a breadboard too much hassle I wanted this thing to be quick and easy for myself and anybody else who may want to uh, grab a hold of one of these. So what I came up with was a small inverter board and all this does is flips the FTDI interface. It flips it upside down. So I will take my Pro Micro and attach the inverter board here. Then I will attach my FT232. And this Pro Micro has already been flashed with the uh, sketch. So I will plug up the USB cable now. And show you what that's doing. And we don't really see too much activity. Uh, I don't know if it's showing up on the camera or not. There is a um, LED. I think it might be the. It is the uh, digital 13. The, the, the common LED for digital 13 is flashing very faint. Basically, what this sketch is doing right now is it's in a loop, searching for a chip that it can program, and there's not one attached to it right now. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to set this down and load this uh, Virgin AT328P with no bootloader into my module here, uh, noting the notch top here for orientation. And when I get done, I can just uh, 
take a small screwdriver and gently lift it back and forth on each side to uh, remove the chip. Just very gradual and gentle on both sides. But for now that's in there. And also on this uh, Pro Mini board that's running that bootloader sketch, if you go to on the computer to uh, serial monitor, we'll see that it has spit out this message. And let me see if I can get a clear view of that so we can see what's going on here. That's just the default message from this unit. Once I plug this other board into the unit, the, uh, it should detect it. Make sure everything's light keyed. If you're uncomfortable about doing this, just disconnect everything first. <laughs> Ah, there we go. I ran it again, and that is the output that we get when it detects the chip. And this thing actually uh, gives you some keys to press L to uh, upload different types of bootloaders, uh, lily pad, 8 megahertz, or U for the uh, standard uh, Uno. Um, go ahead and maximize this for the uh, the Uno 60 megahertz bootloader and that is not fitting in my camera so we'll try it that way Okay, so it's saying press U for Uno, which is what I want to do. And this chip will be flashed with the with the Uno uh, 16 megahertz bootloader. And the way you do this on the serial monitor, if you're new to this, is the status bar at the top of the uh, serial monitor. You want to click in there and enter your response U and press send and then ask me uh, V to verify or G to program and I'm going to go ahead and hit G to program and it has said writing bootloader committing page no errors found and it set the fuses and I can compress C to continue with another chip or what not. Now to show that this has worked what I'm going to do is remove my FTDI, unmount the Pro Mini and I'll keep my inverter board. So now this should be basically an Arduino Uno. Uh, works like a Pro Mini but has the Arduino bootloader on it which is important because that's what I'll have to select in the Arduino compiler environment IDE and we have power uh, so I will go back now to my blink sketch that I got loaded up and I will Go to Tools, Board, set it to Arduino Uno. Make sure serial port is correct. And upload this sketch. 
uh, if it works properly, of course, then the uh, LED for Digital 13 should start flashing. Uploading, and there we have a complete upload, and we see that it is flashing. And I was never able to get this to work with the uh, actual um, sketch from the Arduino.cc site. Uh, I can't thank Mr. Gammon enough because that has really made a world of difference. And this is a lot easier solution to uh, program these chips. If I wanted to do many of them, I could just leave these attached all the time and uh, use it as a bootloader device. I can actually leave them attached, um, put the FTDI in the Um, Pro Micro to flash the bootloader then move the FTDI up to the board with the new chip in it and upload my sketch. Now for those who are interested in this board let me point out some of the key differences that I haven't mentioned already that enable this to work I've already said the uh, program 10 jumper was added to uh, reroute that digital 10 to reset on this board. Uh, if you want to use digital 10, then you have to remove the jumper. Otherwise, it's routed to reset. There's jumper 1 pin there, so it has no effect. Uh, when I made this board, I did include a small 100 milliamp L7805. I will go ahead and demonstrate that. What that means is uh, we still have the ability to run raw power, uh, 9 volts, 12 volts, what have you, into the 7805, which will step it down to um, the 5 volts required for the rest of the circuit. And I have used these regulators on breadboards. There is enough power here to run the Arduino processor, plus some switches, plus an LCD module with backlight, and maybe a few other things. But it's only 100 milliamps, so you can't do a whole crazy amount with it. Go ahead and move my camera down here. Grab power from my uh, breadboard. I have a 12 volt line coming off the breadboard, uh, running to a little pin headers, which makes it convenient since the raw and ground are on the very end of this and I will go ahead and push raw to ground and there we go uh, and for the other differences because the uh, TX0 or excuse me TX1 and RX0 lines are used during the bootloading process uh, they were not connected on these headers here if you want to use the uh, ARC0 TX1 then you will have to use them off of the FTDI line those are connected but other than those caveats it is a perfectly functioning um, Arduino within itself and it allows you to bootload these chips. Well, I hope this helps somebody out there. Thanks for watching.